Hello and welcome to the home of the ghost owl and we're continuing now on to episode three of our Bretonian faction focus uh, looking at the core units that were in the last uh, edition of a rule book that we saw which was sixth edition for Bretonia seeing what units were in it um, how they played and then how they might play in Warhammer the Old World and that is now tempered given that we know more about Bretonia than we do any other faction in terms of the units to be released and so we can look across both the previous and the future and see where the gaps are. So without further ado let's look at the Bretonian core units. Okay so Bretonian core units we had Knights Errant um, in terms of uh, stats, they were pretty low everything uh, except leadership for a cavalry unit. Equipment, hand weapon, lance, heavy armor and shield. Now the knights errant, they come in units of 5 to 15. They can have lance formation and they do have a full command of characters. So your musician, standard bearer, champion. They come with a knight's vow, but they do have impetuous. So they must charge unless they pass a leadership test. Um, if they do charge though, they are immune to psychology. Often I would have... Um, uh, a, a, a small unit of these with a damsel in um, or the prophetess in I should say on a horse uh, kept behind the bat line so that you didn't trigger impetuous um, uh, but uh, overall you know they're the cheapest cavalry unit in the roster four points less than knight of the realm uh, but they do have the lower leadership and weapon skill than a knight of the realm um, so you know you keep them behind the main line to avoid having to charge uh, and as with all Bretonian cavalry if they don't charge, then their effectiveness is massively reduced. You know, they're a strength three model. They need that that extra strength on the charge from the lance. Um, and because you had a low model count, um, uh, in certainly in my in my army list, then I'd rarely use lance formation because lance formation just doesn't work with uh, with the low model counts. You get much better in terms of the the picture you see there on the on the right hand side. Um, you know that is kind of the number of models to make an effective lance formation. Uh, essentially, it is the knight of the realm kit, but the heads don't, are unhelmeted. That's the the big thing with the knights errant, and that's kind of how you tell them easily apart. So Knights Errant then, that is the first of the core units and not the most popular. Next up, however, is the Knights of the Realm. Good weapon skill, leadership, low ballistic skill as you'd expect, but they do also have low toughness, wounds and initiative. Um, they came with a hand weapon, lance, shields and heavy armour, size 5 to 15, um, and they have full command, lance formation as you see in the picture on the right hand side, along with a Knight's Vow and pure breed war horse. So they are moving 8 inches, which is pretty good for heavy cavalry with barding. So Knights of the Realm were always taken um, as the best melee combat core unit. However, at 20, 240 points for 10 models, they're not the cheapest, but they're pretty durable. You know, they've got heavy armor, they've got the barding, mounted shields, you know, pretty durable. And they can hit reasonably hard if they do get the charge, um, you know, uh, and equal to, you know, most other armies, heavy cavalry, even in 8th edition, uh, normally using lance formation if you had a good size of unit. So I always took at least one of these units in my core, sometimes two, depending if you were going for one big block or if you were going for two slightly smaller blocks. Um, but as you can see, they're plastic kit. And we know, for example, there will be Knights of the Realm in Warhammer the Old World, and uh, and it will be the old original kit that you see here in the picture. So it's going to be plastic kit of Knights of the Realm that can also be built as Knights Errant. So we know Knights Errant are going to be there as well. Um, uh, but however, the, the sort of the modern paint scheme you see for Bretonia is them all using the same color paint scheme. Uh, and that is what you see in the picture there on the right hand side. So Knights Errant coming, Knights of the Realm coming. Uh, great to see. Very good. It'd be interesting to see if we see Knights of the Realm still being core if there is even a core category which i'd expect there to be some sort of category troops core or whatever it happens to be uh, but interesting to see if knights of the realm do stay there or not okay the other thing we also know is we've seen a knight of the realm uh, on foot so we know there's going to be a knights of the realm unit on foot um uh we've seen that we've seen the pictures of that if you want to see more please check out my uh reveals my last uh warhammer world reveals video which was from warhammer day uh you can also see them on the warhammer community website 
So the fact we're going to get Knights of the Realm on foot as kind of a more elite unit, that tells me really they should be in special and uh, and maybe we'll see Knights of the Realm move to special as well as opposed to a being a core unit. Uh, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how, how it's going to pan out in terms of that. But certainly in the old edition book, Knights of the Realm were core and they were the best sort of core basic troops unit that you could have, um, but they do come at a cost. Okay, next up we have the Bretonian men at arms stats low everything equipment hand weapon light armor halberd and shield they do have a little bit of armor there unit size is a minimum of 10 so 10 plus they do get a full command there and they come with a special rule so it's peasant's duty which is the first time we've seen this rule and that basically means they can use the leadership of any knight unit within six inches which can be quite nice um, in terms of their output they're basically on a par with skeleton warriors in eighth edition uh, there was a definite shift to large blocks of infantry, which didn't help the Bretonians because their infantry is terrible. Um, however, they're cheap, you know, 100 points for 20, so a couple of units to lock down an enemy unit, allowing for a night charge was not uncommon. So you take the infantry, tie up somebody just long enough so that your knights could get a flanking charge in and uh, and finish them off and that was generally really what the men at arms were for their speed humps roadblocks whatever you want to call them the downside with them compared to the skeletons of course is you can't regenerate them uh so they don't end up like a tar pit they are more of that speed bump but if you can slow the enemy down so you can get your knights to charge in then that was basically uh, the, the the best way of of doing it um it'll be interesting to see now again with get, how making bretonian more competitive we're seeing knights of the realm on foot so from an infantry standpoint they're going to have different options of infantry um, men at arms we know they're going to be in warhammer the old world they've already announced that it will be the the uh, old plastic kit that you do see here which is actually not a bad kit i have to say i do have plenty of these guys um, and it's uh, it's a pretty reasonable kit lots of options lots of flavor in there quite nice including the drummer with the frogs on the end of his uh his sticks um but uh but yeah so we know that's coming uh we know there's knights of Rome on foot so definitely these guys are going to be core cool. uh we'll see if they are able to be a little bit better than skeletons and i kind of think they should be um but uh you know we'll, we'll have to see how the rules pan out but uh, in in the old edition book they were pretty bad infantry in total warhammer in the in the in the uh the game the pc game they're pretty terrible um so i'm certainly not expecting anything significant from these in terms of damage output um but i do expect them to be cheap and expendable and finally uh there are only four bretonian core units we have the peasant bowman low everything except ballistic skill they come with a hand weapon a longbow and defensive stakes defensive stakes which you can see in the picture there um they lost they you lose them if you move uh but if they're up charging units get no bonuses including fighting first it goes in initiative order and they cannot use special rules that require charging so if you've got a monster for example that, that needs to charge and it does impact it or something you don't get that at all um uh, you do have the option, though, to, to lose the defensive stakes uh, and change to having them in skirmish formation at one point per model. And they can also take braziers at five points a unit to make all attacks flaming. Uh, unit size, 10 plus, uh, full command characters, uh, special rules, the same peasant's duty. So uh, often two good sized units of bowmen were taken. They're pretty good. Um, a decent arch unit. You know, long bows are the longest range bows in the game at times. So you've got 30 inch uh, bows, which is great. Um, and you can make them with flaming attacks as well. That can, uh, you know, five points a unit is probably worth it. Um, pretty good. Um, and they're only one point per model more than a man at arms. So, you know, and the man at arms aren't going to do much more damage output than these guys. These guys just have a little bit less armor, so they're more vulnerable to enemy missile fire as well. But you could probably outrange most of them. Um, I would tend to use the stakes um, as opposed to skirmish. Um, you, you kind of save the the points, which you really do need. So that one point per model, a 20 man unit, two 20 man units, that's 80 points. That's quite a lot. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, sorry. Uh, 
it's uh, 40 points, 80 points, I'm doubling everything up. It's uh, 40 points, but that's still quite a lot. You know, it goes into a virtue or something for one of your characters. Um, and to be honest, you're not with 30 inch range, you don't need to move your archers that much if you place them in the right location. And just having that ability to negate. Um, you know, if they get charged, particularly, you know, archer units, they're going to get charged by things like fast cavalry, maybe, uh, you know, something like, um, uh, you know, vampire um, uh, uh, wolves and that sort of thing, dire wolves and so on, uh, bats. You know, it, it really does help because they're not going to have high initiative. So if you take away that fights first, you know, you might even with the low initiative of these peasants get a chance to attack first and take some of those models down. So definitely for me preferred the stakes um now interestingly we know the old kit the old plastic kit as with the man at arms is uh, is going to be what's used in warhammer the old world so they're going to be plastic they're going to be in boxes of 32 uh, the same as the man at arms which is going to be a little bit concerning because a box of 32 sounds like we're going to be building some pretty big units and personally i really enjoyed the fourth and fifth edition of warhammer when infantry blocks you know 20 man infantry block was a big block of infantry you know sort of 15 to 20 kind of worked the best um so boxes of 32 do worry me a little bit, kind of suggest these, you know, armies with tons of models, uh, which become expensive and take, you know, years to, to get everything painted up because you're painting like 200 um, peasants, um, which isn't the best. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. But if it is the old uh, kit, then you are going to get these stakes. You are going to get the brazier. Um, so, you know, can we expect to see some rules around defensive stakes? I believe that we will. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they do that. And will it be the same as if you move them, you lose them? Uh, quite possibly. Uh, because how are you going to take them with you in the middle of a battle? So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, yeah, that's the one thing that does concern me. Big boxes. Um, either either it's going to be uh, you're going to be able to split that into two units. But from what if we see everything else that Games Workshop is doing, one box is a unit which sort of says if it's a 32 men in, in one box, that quite well could mean we're looking at 32 man units, which is massive, um, big buy-in, and, uh, and, and a long time to get painted up. So that brings us to the end of the Bretonian core units. There are only four. As I said, it is a limited roster. Um, Bowman, useful. Man at arms as a speed bump. Uh, knights of the realm they're the hardest hitting core you, you know you're definitely going to take those knights errant you know eh, you can take them you cannot they you know, they, they give somewhere for a, 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 a caster on a horse to hide basically um but that's about it but there you go if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down let me know why in the comments down below as always please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content it's free for you to do but it means a massive amount for me so thank you for that in advance You'll also notice the camera is off. Uh, feedback suggested um, that on YouTube specific content, not live streaming, that the camera was distracting and took up uh, parts of the screen. So we've turned it off for this series. Please give us the feedback on whether you prefer the camera on or off. Uh, but it also does give us more space uh, to put bigger pictures of the miniatures on the screen as well. But please get, give me that feedback. We want to improve the content. And I can only do that if you tell me what you like and what you don't like, what works and what doesn't work. You've been watching the Ghost Hour. Tune back in as we take a look at the Bretonian special units. <laughs>